On one side of the threesome, you have Mahomes, Andy Reid, Travis Kelsey. On the other side of this threesome, Tom Brady, Bill Belichick, Rob Gronkowski. You don't want to talk about a threesome with Andy Reid? It's ridiculous how absurd this has become. I'm not sure if Lamar Jackson's that great. Am I an asshole? Yes, a lot of people say that. Duh! But at the end of the day, I don't care how many times they show Taylor Swift. I'm basically a Swifty. What I'm about to tell you could get me fired from all of my jobs. Here's what frustrates me about Dan Campbell. Honestly, the Detroit Lions should be in the Super Bowl. And it's a bummer that they're not. Patrick Mahomes, the best I've ever seen. Never seen better. He is the GOAT. The 28-3 Super Bowl, I got drunk and passed out. I didn't know who won when I woke up. That was a big fail, Beetle. It was. College women's basketball specifically is having a moment. I'm a little confused by Doc Rivers. If he was on Pat McAfee show, is that must watch? Do you want to talk Belichick? or Nikki and Megan. We could talk Belichick, but we don't want to. I'm going to speak like the biggest dork every day for the rest of my life. I literally want to go back to Hebrew school and beat the shit out of him. Unfortunately for Steph, their their team is in the dumpster right now. So we'll see how that affects WrestleMania. I don't think, are you pooping? He might be pooping. Mine's not pooping is definitely in the super cut. From Wondery, I'm Michelle Beadle. And I am Peter Rosenberg. And this is Over the Top. Here is how the show works. Best stories of the week in sports and pop culture face off to crown a champion. We'll answer the simple question, what is the undisputed most important thing on planet Earth this week? We're going to decide it the only way we know how using Royal Rumble rules. We'll start with two stories. We decide which one is more worthy to discuss and which one has to go. After 90 seconds, a new story will be introduced and we'll have to decide whether we want to keep talking about our current story or switch to the new one. We don't know the order of stories coming our way, but we do decide which ones get thrown over the top rope. Peter, what's up first? We got a couple of great things to start off with. But I gotta, before we okay. even start the show, Beetle, I got to tell you, people love you. Yeah, Royal That's Royal, not true at all. True. Royal Rumble weekend. I got a lot of like, saw your show with Michelle Beetle. Oh, you're doing the show with Michelle Beetle. Beetle. Be well, I was, you know what? <laughs> Beetle's doing a show with me. <laughs> Boom! Baby. Drop that much. Yeah, also, last time I was in the wrestling world, I don't. I wasn't well-received, but I appreciate it. I appreciate well, the kind words. <laughs> for, for some reason, people still really like you. All right, it's let's been get into time. it. The <laughs> Super Bowl is set. The long-awaited Niners-Chiefs rematch from 2019 is back, and that is up against playoff collapses. The Lions losing to the Niners despite a 17-point lead at halftime, and the Ravens scoring a season-low 10 points and their loss against the Chiefs. Are we talking about like early Super Bowl predictions or the collapses of these teams? So much red in this Super Bowl. It's just if red's not your color, <sighs> so good true. luck to you. So um, but no, we have so much time to talk about the Super Bowl. And honestly, eh, I think the collapses is where it's at on this one. So go ahead, Brock and Pat, show yourselves over the top. We will <sighs> get to you eventually. But... Peter, I'm gonna give you a confession, okay? Mm -hmm. And judge me if as you want. But you and I, we work in sports, and what I'm about to tell you could get me fired from all of my jobs. Oh, but, I'm in. Okay, so it was Sunday night, and I was watching the Lions Niners game, and the Lions got themselves a pretty little 17 point run, and I was like, all right, we're good, we're fine. It's, this game is pretty much good to go. I'm gonna go to a yoga class so that I can get my mind right to start my week no off fresh way. Monday morning. <laughs> And it's L.A., so, you know, no one cares because they don't even know there's a football game on. So I go to my yoga class. I come out. I immediately oh go to my God. phone and just mouth open. Look around. No one cares. I'm like, okay, I'm just going to get in the car and deal with it by myself. I cannot believe that they blew a 17-point lead on the road. The Cinderella story that could have been was over. It's sad for Lions fans. It's uh -huh. also sad for everyone. If you're not <laughs> like if you're not a 49ers fan or Chiefs fan specifically, you wanted Detroit. And and you were like, that's what's going to make this Super Bowl interesting is Detroit. And and at 21 7, here's what I really uh. started to believe. And my guess is this is when Lions fans were the most invested and probably broke their heart. 21 7 and driving. 
So you're like, okay, we're about to go up three scores. They settle for the field goal, which blows my mind that everyone's been saying, well, yeah, he has to do what he does. He always goes for it. Well, he didn't in the first half. He pulled no. up, took the three, went up 24-7. So why later were you unable to take three? So I just feel bad. Honestly, we were all ripped off. Everyone, everyone. And by the way, just side note, is it me or is Eminem aging well? It's, it's, that's a, I don't think it's just side you. Note. I think he's aging pretty well. He also like hides himself. What you're trying to say is for an aging white guy, he looks okay. One of my people is finally aging well. That's, That's because because if he was like a black artist of the same <laughs> age, you probably would like expect that he wouldn't look horrible. But since he's look, white and he's like 50, you're like, he should look 75. He really just looks like 50, maybe 45. Maybe I think 45. I give him 45. I, you know, I thought about it. I was like, fucking Eminem, I see you. But yes, back to the story at hand. Depression. Heat check. NBA players are on an insane scoring tear. Last week, here we go. Carl Anthony Towns, Devin Booker, each had over 60 points. Embiid and Luka both dropped 70 and 73, respectively. Do we want to continue talking about these epic collapses? We didn't even get to the Ravens. Right. Or switch to the NBA and the scoring craziness that's going on? I think there's a chance we disagree here, though maybe not. The scoring stuff in the NBA is wild. I yep. don't see it ending. So I think we nope. will have plenty more non-football NBA season to talk about the insane scoring. Okay. Kind of feel I have more to eat, say about the Lions before we even get to the Ravens. So Let's I want to stay NFL. So yes. Luca and Joel, get the hell out of here. Let's keep talking football. We'll get to you guys after the Super Bowl. Um, even though unfortunately it's immediately the all-star break, but you get the idea. <laughs> it now, really it's I, I so the, the Lions game was a complete blower. I do not understand. Here, here's what frustrates me about Dan Campbell. Like, uh -huh. first of all, I really like him. Like, I do so think he's changed this franchise. Even what he said after the game, like his sort of realistic honesty of like, hey, you never know if you're getting back here. Like, this is you know. I don't know if you saw the there. video of him walking out with his arm around Teddy Bridgewater. I thought it was. Uh. I, I like him. I like Dan Campbell. You have to be able to adjust your strategy in a playoff game. You know, it would be like it would be like a fighter. Beetle, like uh, who's generally a knockout artist, but he has an opportunity to win the title against an even better fighter. And they're up on the card late and they just keep pressing and keep pressing until they get knocked out. Sometimes you got to step back and just try to win on the cards. And no. they just needed to step off the gas, make it a three possession game and win. And mm, that stinks. I mean, I appreciate that Jared Goff afterwards was like, we loved it. We just should have converted. I, no, stay with in. your boy. Hang with your They're boy. Yeah, it's a bummer because, you know, had the Dallas game not happened where he also was a little bit stubborn there at the end. It's very tin cup like sometimes in the way it feels as if like, nope, this is our brand and we're sticking to it. And on the one hand, I respect it. But then you go through moments like this game where honestly, the Detroit Lions should be in the Super Bowl. And it's a bummer that they're not. Truly. I know. And here we are running out of time again, and we still haven't gotten to the Ravens, which is such an epic fail well, as well. Well, maybe, maybe we go three. Maybe we, we, maybe go, we three. go three. All right, entering the ring. Stephen A. Smith. We're going three. Go on. I'm sorry. Steve, Stephen A. Smith said on Howard Stern last week that he wants to debate Donald Trump. All right. Do we want to continue talking about playoff collapses? Or switch over to the debate from hell. I don't know how much there is to say you, about this. I don't I mean, know what you want from me here. <laughs> I mean, listen, Stephen will say whatever. Donald Trump. I whip First his all, ass in a Donald in a, Trump would in a debate. eat him alive. Let's be honest. It's, it would be just an epic. You think so? Diarrhea for the eyes and ears. But uh, I don't. I, I don't know. I don't think current Donald. I don't. I think he is. I think he slipped off his insult game. What would he call Sloppy Steven? We call him Sloppy Steven. He's so no, he can't call him sloppy. That's not even fair. I, I can't imagine a punishment that you could come up with for me that would be worse. Like if I murdered an entire family and was on death row, this would be the alternative is me having to listen to this debate. Stephen A versus Donald Trump. It's literally I'd rather go to death row. I've already picked out my last meal. Wow. We're good. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, let's stick with the let's stick with the playoff. All right. I, I, Beetle <laughs> Beetle has made her case. Stephen A. I'm sorry, Donald. You gotta go. Sorry, Stephen. He's so sorry. Um, 
Back to the Ravens, the Ravines, if you yeah, will. Yeah, we haven't even gotten to them yet. Did anybody, when we thought about the different outcomes of this game, I never heard anybody say one of the outcomes was the Ravens will score no points. Like, I, I didn't <laughs> think that was <laughs> no. on the table. I thought maybe okay. Kansas City would end up getting shut down by the Baltimore defense, and maybe they'd be out of nope. gas. Like, to him and Kelsey, are they really enough? And, and Pacheco, is that enough? I never thought that the Ravens would lay. Remember last week we speculated on the big middle finger that potentially. Yep. The biggest middle finger, the largest middle finger in history was supposed to be handed out. Well, Lamar is not getting to hold up a middle finger. In fact, I need all the people who made everybody feel guilty. <laughs> if you're even critical of Lamar Jackson to kind of crawl out of the woodwork now, because a lot of people like literally, if you're like, I'm not sure if Lamar Jackson's that great. They're like, how dare you? He should be the <laughs> highest paid player in football. No one's better. He's better than. And I'm like, I, I don't know if he's a big time guy. That was not a big. That was a big fail, Beetle. It was. It was everything that the naysayers say. Two and four in the playoffs. You know, you're averaging, what, 30 something points in the games leading up to this that you allow that you score and then you allow your opponents nothing and this is what we get a 17 10 was that the final 17 yeah. 10 it was yeah. and it was sort of vintage kelsey and mahomes like it just although, it although was another thing another thing ryan clark yesterday i mean I, oh. our, our colleagues who i think are i think rc's great right yeah like he, he does a great job but like sometimes people are so desperate to make a statement on championship sunday like patrick mahomes the best i've ever seen Never seen better. He is the goat. He could end up being that. But sure, I don't yeah. know if I don't know if yesterday with 17 point second half shutout performance was like, yeah, he was 30 of 39. He was really good. But like that wasn't some for the ages no. performance by Patrick Mahomes. No, that's coming in a couple of weeks. Probably don't, don't get it twisted. He, no, I'm not betting gonna, against him again. I'm done. No, I'm I'm done. Luckily, I'm in a state right now that doesn't allow me to bet. So my money was saved because I would have lost it, Peter. I would have lost all of it. I, I, I did the worst thing you can do. <laughs> What'd you I, do? Oh, no. Well, I don't bet, but I care about my picks that I give out. And I yeah. all week up through Friday, two hours into my radio show, I was Chiefs. And then I just was like, you know what? I, I, I think maybe. And I just changed my mind and went nope. Ravens. But I nailed my I, I nailed my Lions pick thanks to that late uh, thanks to another going forward on fourth by dan campbell well they covered the spread but i i had them actually winning so for a minute oh, there right. again for a couple quarters i thought i'd won already oh, That's why and then I so much so class. that you went to yoga you are <laughs> I'm an you, idiot. i love by the way i love <laughs> when beetle like i think i think like guys who've always been in love with beetle there's like this thing of she's like she's the ultimate dudes girl like she's oh. just like loves sports and blah 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 and then in the right moment she will yep. just show you she is still a girl through a girl. and through she's just, just a, girl. a girl who wants I'm listening yoga to it i listened to it on the way to the class and then again and it was just like it was it's not the first time I, you know, I, the 28, three Super Bowl, I got drunk and passed out. I didn't know the one when I woke up, things happened, Peter, <laughs> and it was my house. I was hosting the party. I love uh, what you've done. Coming hot, uh, the women's college basketball game between South Carolina and LSU. And this mm -hmm. is something else. Average more viewers than the heat Celtics game that aired on TNT at the same time. Do we want to continue? talking about the collapses we just witnessed in the NFL or switch over to women's college basketball, beating out the dudes. Hmm. That's kind of nuts, actually. It is. It is a little crazy. I think I, I, I guess we've covered the hmm. NFL. I think so. All right. All right. Get out of here. Get Lamar and Jared, yeah, you lost again. Maybe we'll see like one of them wandering around Radio Row during Super Bowl week. Oh, not. yeah. Like promoting some sort of like. Um, you know, ED like pill. Yeah. Or, no, they're too know. they're too young for that. Good lord. Fair, that's I hope a good not. point. That's a good Oof. point. Anywho. One year one me? year one year at Radio Row, I caught a Snickers from Kirk Cousins. It was a moment. Did you yeah. eat it or save it? I ate it. He was a oh, Redskins okay. but he was Redskins quarterback at the time. So it, it meant time. something to me. So you should have kept it and like put it in like a glass. Like really? A a, yeah, I mean, <laughs> and people would go, "What is this?" And I go, "It's yes. a Snickers." That Kirk it could Cousins be behind you right now, and I'd be like, "Ooh, what's that what? Snick?" And everyone would ask. Oh, that's Kirk Cousins Snickers over there. That actually <laughs> sounds weird. Anyways, <laughs> here's what I think is probably most the most interesting thing to me about a women's college basketball game. Yeah, 
outdrawing the NBA, even though, as we talked about last week with everything that's been going on with Caitlin Clark, like yep. there's clearly something going on and Angel Reese last year, like there's something going on with women's basketball and that's mm-hmm. dope. But in some ways, I think it's also a bigger indictment of the NBA during the regular season. Ooh. Like it just takes time. Okay. You admitted your truth. You admitted your here truth we go. about. So what we do here. I, I I can't finish a game before the All-Star break. A, a game? Like no games? Like I don't watch wire to wire NBA games before February. I what don't. about the Knicks blowing out the Nuggets? That was something. Cool. And once I see that it's a blowout, guess what I do? Find wrestling. Go to go, yoga class. That's or what go I do. to a yoga class. Like I, <laughs> I yeah, I just, so I, and, and I love the NBA. Huh. And by the time I get to the playoffs, I watch every night, you know, the yeah. double header I'm in, but it takes me a while to get there. And you know, there's a lot, especially early in the season, they yeah. stack a lot of weeknight basketball, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, uh, Friday. There's a lot of Friday, na- Saturday. Now, now Saturday, you get the national games. There's a lot of basketball. So I don't know. I mean, it, it, but both can be true. It's a dope thing for co- women's college basketball. Like they they have stars it's big. and people are interested, but yeah, I think it's a little both. I think it's big too. And I also think if you throw the comparisons into WNBA, like college women's basketball specifically is having a moment, like a true moment and i don't know what it is about that that feels a little bit different than other years is it the star power that we have we weren't used to having before i don't know but i like it and i hope it's not just one of those fads i hope this keeps going in the up direction closing out the half this just in donald trump would like to appeal being thrown (laughs) over the top you know it's not right Mangy Michelle Beadle. She's always been mangy. very mangy. (laughs) Mangy. i don't don't know what i don't have another m (laughs) adjective I like uh, it. I like right, la- Last story before the half. After striking out in the NFL head coaching carousel, Bill Belichick is unemployed. However, he was reportedly offered a spot to be on the Pat McAfee show. <laughs> of course he was. Do we want to continue talking about women's college basketball or switch over to Bill Belichick's employment or lack thereof status? I mean, I look, women, I love you, but we were early on. We got a lot of time left. We'll get back to you for sure. Um, but I want to talk about Bill Belichick. So. Ladies, later. You don't mind. Yeah, bye. Um, dude. So the theories on this are running the gamut, but I'm sticking to my original thought that it's not necessarily his age, but it's partly the commitment that he would be willing to give or science would allow him to give. If you're trying to build a culture and you want a coach in place, you know, optimistically speaking, for a decade or so, that's not your dude. And so I kind of get it. Um, I I don't know why we're so shocked. It it was, tell me if I'm the only one that felt like this. It felt weird when people were like, how dare someone not give Bill Belichick a job? I was like, it happens to the best of us. We age out and maybe they're just not into it right now. And he might be lingering over some of these other guys as the season starts. Looking at you, Eagles and Cowboys. Like maybe that's the plan. Well, you know what they say, dress for the job you want, not the job (laughs) you have. And he dressed to be a hobo. So (laughs) things are going well. Or with his lack of sleeves, he dressed to be on Pat McAfee's show also. Oh, you're right. If he was on Pat McAfee's show, is that must watch? Or just I don't know. I don't know if he says anything. Like, I don't know once he's out of the league whether he'll start being interesting or not. I I hope I mean maybe. Also, I don't know if you've noticed, McAfee has slowly started wearing sleeves almost every day. There's something yeah, going on there. Sell out. Sell out. Something <laughs> has happened. But yeah, I, I, I'm honestly, I'm not shocked either. And I know it's weird because like he is the goat, but yeah. he's in his 70s. He obviously wants to control everything. everything. The team has not been good for years. If he wants to be, uh, you know, as they say, buy the groceries, he's not a great GM. So Mm-mm. I, I kind of get it. Sorry, Bill. I kind of get it. I kind of get it. And I don't know. Maybe that was the sticking point. He refused to give up some of his requirements. Who knows? We'll never know. Maybe we will. Uh, We're halfway through the show right now. Oh, my God. The most important topic of the day is Bill Belichick. God, I'm glad there's another half left. Yeah, me too. Me too. I think we're we're doing it right so far. All right. We're on it. We're on it. Welcome back to over the top. Uh, Right now, Bill Belichick sits on top, buddy. Might be the only time he's talked about for the rest of the year, Peter. What's Mm. next? Yeah, right. Yeah, I doubt it. Uh, All right, (laughs) our next challenger to start out the second half, Megan the Stallion and Nicki Minaj are in full-scale beef mode. Uh, Diss tracks dropping left and right, clapbacks on Twitter, X, whatever, and IG Live. I cannot keep up. 
<laughs> do you want to talk Belichick or Nikki and Megan? We could talk Belichick, but we don't want to. I already know that. And honestly, I'm only sort of knowledgeable on what's been going on. Like, I'm aware that there's a beef uh, and that it's gotten ugly. And I want to hear more about that. So, Bill Belichick, please, by all means, just go. <laughs> just go. Please. Oh, all right. I, I'm fine. There's nothing else to say about. Yeah, Bill there's Belichick. nothing else to say. He's not, he doesn't have a job. We'll see what happens. Um, OK, talk to me. What is going on? Whose side are we on? What's happening? And why can't they just get along? <laughs> so so Megan, Megan and Nikki have been weird for several years. Depending who you believe, I believe that it's because the song WAP happened. I believe Megan siding doing something with Cardi uh, was the end of her and Nikki's eyes because there's a on. history there. She's not the only person who Nikki has turned on because they did something with Cardi. So I have to assume, I have to assume my dog just did something. I don't know what it is. Bear, what are you doing? Come here. Is he pooping? Is he pooping? I don't think, are you pooping? He might be pooping. He just knocked something over. I don't know what he's doing. So Mine's not pooping. I already know some of that is making it to the super cut on Instagram, but. <laughs> Mine's not pooping is definitely it, in the super cut. <laughs> it seems, it seems like it could be there. So, so I believe it's because of the WAP thing, just because Ooh. Nikki has a history with that. Let's be honest. She doesn't play well in the sandbox with others. It's not her thing. So. But other women, right? Like that's yes, kind of her thing. Does specifically women. Uh, right. And so Megan threw out a line that was pretty intense. Um, said, you're, don't, you know, you're not mad at Megan. You're mad at Megan. Megan's law, which is like the law that requires sex offenders to. Oh, because of her. Oh, yeah, it's a shot at her Nikki's husband. husband. So that then sent Nikki into full like destruction mode. Right. But then Nikki's song was like so poorly mixed and it really? just didn't sound good. And she just was trying too hard. And is she like becoming friends with like Ben Shapiro and stuff? Like, what's oh my that god! About? By the way, what's speaking, that? You know what that is? You do, you know what that is? That is our Nah Fam moment of the week. We got right one. Nah Fam. Nah Fam. Ben Shapiro <laughs> rapping is. <laughs> however, you felt about a debate between Donald <laughs> Trump and Stephen A. Smith. <laughs> Here you go. Take that, and I think multiply it by a lot, and it's Ben Shapiro doing some ironic right wing. Oh, anti-wokeness rap Good i despise ben shapiro in such a way you know what he's like he's I like someone, think of a few things yeah, yeah he's like someone yeah like a virgin cancer yeah you can just start naming words <laughs> <laughs> go on it's like for example like we all code switch to some extent we speak different ways in different places and sometimes sure. you, to, you try to speak cooler than you actually speak yeah. It's like he wakes up and like adjusts his voice to be like, I'm going to speak like the biggest dork every day for the rest of my life. This will be my brand. It is how I speak. And if I speak this way, I will be smart. And if I say it in a certain way and very aggressively, everyone will Oof. think I'm smart. So if I emphasize things and have a tone like this, I must be right. And it's so embarrassing. I, I, I find I'm honest. I'm going to be honest. I, as a Jewish man in broadcasting, and he's like such an openly forward Jewish man in broad, like he embarrasses me. Like I literally want to go back to Hebrew school and beat the shit out of him. I, I want to find him in the hallway at Hart Sion in Wheaton, Maryland and fight him. We didn't go to the same Hebrew school, but if we did, like I just want to fight did. him. God, I wish we had a simulator. <sighs> My time machine simulator is so past overdue. But Peter, what, so Peter, now that what, makes sense. Peter, what do you want to do? Do you want to go back and talk to one of your grandparents? or Do you, you want to kill Hitler before he was even a teenager? Do you want to do any of these things? Do you want to nope. relive the greatest sex you've ever had? No. God, no. What, what is that? Give me Shapiro. One-on-one. <laughs> on one. And now he's rapping? Oh, God. And right. she's giving him, like, shine? Like, oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, right. by the way, Nikki, I missed a lot. Yeah, but at the same time, you miss nothing. I know, it feels like I didn't really miss much. All right, entering the squad circle. Oh, man, this feels like 400 years ago. The Milwaukee Bucks firing their coach, Adrian Griffin, and hiring Doc Rivers straight out the booth. They were 30 and 13 when this move was made. Do we want to continue talking about Megan and Nikki just not getting along or switch over to Doc's next shot? I mean, I'm good on, I feel like I've said enough on Megan and Nikki and like- I learned. She awkwardly, so I, I talked about her on my morning show today and Ebro put up a post of oh, me no. talking about it and I'm like, oh no, what's she gonna say? 
She, this woman will literally not acknowledge me anymore. She literally oh. responded to the post as if it was Ebro talking. So I feel she like she responded that, though. That's interesting. Yeah, but does it acknowledge me as a human being? Which I'm like, you, not only that's, do you not apologize for being for doing me well, dead yeah. wrong when I was <laughs> dead right about you, no apology. Now you don't acknowledge yeah. me. No it's apology or acknowledge me. You know what? That means you've made it. You're in their minds. I, there are people that do that to me, and I, I'm like, all right, I won that one, I guess. You, you know cool. what? I guess you're right, because it's like, there's no way you forgot about me, so obviously no. you're just doing something like you don't even want to bring me up, like I'm the fucking candy It's taking candy effort man. to purposely ignore your existence. Yeah, well, guess and what? I As like a result, it. over the top you go, Nikki. And Meg, unfortunately, you have to go also. But I know. She's so pretty. Okay, she seems nice. No, Meg, Meg is a sweet girl. So, so the reason I'm interested in this one, and tell me how you feel. Mm -hmm. I understand the Bucks had big defense problems. And in some ways I could give props to them for being willing to make a change at 30 and 13. Cause they're like, we just don't think we're good enough to win the championship. Let's, let's do something. I'm a little confused by doc rivers. Cause like I'm a Celtics fan uh -huh. and like love doc got big love for doc, but I've never heard a Celtics fan feel like he's the reason we won a championship. Ow. And since then, He's done nothing but disappoint with title contenders. And who did he get picked up by? Another big time title contender. Like big we know time. just the guy to take us over the top. The guy who couldn't take Philly or LA over the top. Yeah, I um, look, it's not just that. It's sort of the way it was real Game of Thronesy sort of cutthroat back the behind the scenes, like bringing Doc in back during the in-season tournament as like a consultant. So he's yeah. in the room with Griffin. He's in the room with the powers that be. It's so snaky. And by the way, I love Doc. Doc was a like one of our broadcasters back in the day when I was an intern for the Spurs. Like I, I'm, I've always been a fan of Doc the person. Doc the coach, I don't really get the hire as well and $40 million guaranteed given his track record the last couple jobs. Um, he, you know what I think it is, Peter? Doc's a lesson to those of us who don't play the game. And I am one of them. He's good at that part of life. Like, I think he's the guy that people like and want in the room. And he's got that thing, that schmooze, that whatever. Um, and so in moments like this, he's thought of immediately. I think that's what it is. I, I can't you know think what, of another though? reason. And I'm awful that. at that part. So I get it. I get it. And and honestly, being a cool dude goes a long way. So maybe it's literally it just does. like, we like him. We want him yeah. around. He's fun. He tells great stories. Bring him. Boom. Let's make. And by the way, but now you don't do it. Ooh, that's going to be an interesting conversation. Yeah. Come Three. up. May <laughs> three straight contender. And... All right. Whose music is that? It, it, it's <laughs> it is either Cody Rhodes or Bailey because both won the men's and women's Royal Rumbles, earning them both championship shots at WrestleMania 40. But now the biggest news coming out of the Royal Rumble is an injury for CM Punk, mm. Beatles old buddy. Best friend. Do we want to talk more doc mm. or do you want to move on to the Royal Rumble? I'll be honest with you. I don't know what else to say about Doc. I mean, we're going to get to see him finally, you know, this week we'll have seen him his first time coaching out. We'll see what, what they do and they rally and maybe the honeymoon period will be just long enough to make the postseason last longer than we think it will. So, Doc, we'll be seeing you uh, at least for a little while. And I, Peter, you were there. You were at the Rumble. I was watching. Uh, I actually remembered. My brain is mush. And I'm going to say this. This is my one thing I'm saying. All right. I enjoyed the women's rumble far more than I enjoyed the men's. Is that something people were saying to you? Yes. I think okay. that I think the takeaway from the weekend was overall a good fun event, but the absolute yeah. highlight was the women's rumble. No, yeah. no it was the best match of the, there were only four on the card and the, the women's rumble match exceeded the men's. It exceeded the fatal four way. It exceeded Logan Paul and KO. It was the, to me, it was the most fun match. The uh, appearance of Jade Cargill was. Oh, can we just? I mean. A specimen. Perfection. What level of familiar were you with her on a scale of, you know, nothing to vary? So I, I would say a five, you know, one to ten, only because of social media. Like sort of I've realized that the hype has been building. And then when they signed her, I was like, OK. But this was my, I guess this was everyone's sort of first um, real look. Oh my God. I just blown away. Like if I was draw, if I, if I had the ability to draw the perfect wrestler, that's her. She looks amazing. She looks like she's going to crush people. I, I'm, I'm in, 100% in.
Yeah, she, it's, there's never been something quite like someone just quite like Jade Cargill. Uh, and, and by the way, she did great. Like I, th- I thought the yeah. end of, like she had a big spot in that match, which you could easily blow. I'm always so nervous in Royal Rumbles when they're like doing stuff on the apron. I'm like, I just could imagine slipping and falling off and ruining the entire thing. Oh, but um, no, so the women, the women crushed it. Shout to Bailey as well. She's yep. the best. And uh, yeah, it was an awesome show. Okay. So wait, so CM Punk's hurt. Cause that felt like, um, like kind of long. I felt it was long also that like when okay. it came down to the last two, Cody and Punk, it felt like they were in there for a long time. Yeah. And you know, Punk is not a young man anymore. Who is? I think he's 49. I believe. No. 45. I lied. Okay. Well, he looks 49. You were right. <laughs> Ah, that's not nice. We look um, the same age. But yeah, I mean, so we'll, we'll see how that affects WrestleMania. Um, Dang. But it's a bummer. And it was one of the things, I have to admit, I'm stoked that he's in WWE now, but one of the worries I had was he see, when he was in AEW, he seemed to get dinged up. Like whenever he did a lot, it seemed like something would happen. And at a certain age, that could just be the thing. See, uh, remember a guy named Aaron Rodgers, by any chance? Barely, but yes. Yeah. Yes, yes, so it done. happens. It happens. Let me ask you this. Is Punk still straight edge or would he be against, oh, I don't know, a little HGH cocktail for the healing? It's a great question. Would would his straight edgeness preclude him <laughs> from a little. <laughs> Just a little, little help, a little pop. I, don't, nudge. I bet he wouldn't, but I don't know. Maybe there's a special rule for that. Maybe there is. Like the Hollywood version, the one that like helps you, you know. You know, it's, it's fine. The one that's fine. Whatever Demi Moore's on, the, the blood of virgins. I don't know, but whatever she's on, give that to everyone. That's something. I, she hasn't told us yet, but right. she's aging backwards. Uh, the next challenger, Carmelo Anthony, said that Kevin Durant should be in the GOAT conversation a week after KD questioned why he is never considered for that title. Hmm. Do we want to continue talking about the rumble punk and everything that went with it or switch to Kevin Durant's goat status? <laughs> I feel bad doing this, but for Uh-oh. the second time in just three days, CM Punk is going <laughs> over the top again. Cody, you too. <laughs> Bailey, you're also out of here. Yeah. Because I think this is a fun conversation. Kevin Durant okay. as, as a goat, like as a, a real conversation about could he be a truly a listen? No one actually means goat anymore. So no, 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 let's no. just. But we mean like on the list of what, like five to ten. That's what I think overall. Okay, okay. I think I'll if you're saying goat, it's five to ten because <laughs> no one's saying he's better than Michael. Like yep. that's just, that's not being said or uh-uh. or Kobe or a, a few of those top ones. I don't think anyone's saying that. I don't think so either. But for my but, money, he's top of the list of people I like watching. What does that count as? I mean, it's worth something. Also, by the way, look at his numbers still. I mean, he's supposed to be slowing down. He's still averaging 30 points a game. He's 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 one of the best in-game shooters I've ever seen in my life. So pretty. So um, pretty. Uh, he's the best big man shooter who's ever walked the planet. Who would you rather have taken the final shot in the league right now? It's him or Steph, isn't it, still? It is. Unfortunately for Steph, their, their team is in the dumpster right now, um, right. so it's hard. Although... Predicting Steph will have a 70 point game here in the next week or two just has to happen. Has, has to. to happen. Might be a loss, but a 70 pointer nonetheless. Yeah, no. I mean, come on. <laughs> if Carl Anthony Towns is scoring like this, Steph is like, what am I doing here? If PJ Washington's on the 40 point list, ask yourself, what are we doing? Little upset, by the way. I was Royal Rumbling this weekend and I missed the big LeBron Steph battle. Oh, little the upset. Double OT. That. that was insane. Yeah, LeBron, again, LeBron has, he's found a, co- a cocktail. Something. No, no, he's he's different. Punk needs to talk to LeBron. <laughs> LeBron should do that thing A Rod does, where he's now teaching at like universities. You mean like steroids? USC. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I love you, A Rod, my guy. It's just a joke, but I mean, it's out there. It's, Come on. I mean, it's not really a joke, but yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Right, but I mean, yes. you know what I mean. It is what I, it is. Hey, I'm, I would have done it. I'm poking fun at something that happened, but it's not a big deal. I would have um, done anything I could get away with to be as good as I could be. Period. End of story. Even if they said outright, this is cheating. Uh, and once it became a rule, it'd probably be a little bit different. I'd have to, I'd be sneaky. But yeah, look, I, I'm a woman. We inject things into our faces, hey just in the hopes that it'll make us look one year younger than it did the year before. That's it. So yes, I would have 100% done it. And I think most people are lying if they act all clutchy of the pearls. 
Clutchy of the Pearls. Clutchy of the Pearls. Do you, and so are we going to talk about next week? Will we get more specifically into your Botox treatment? People want to know. Oh, sure. Yeah, no, I can give you everything. Every Sometimes deep. I don't even know what she's doing. I just go in there and say, I make it happen. Do the best you can. Just tell me what it's what I gotta pay at the end. <laughs> All right, guys, who's ready for some Lorvis? <laughs> I forgot about Lorvis, Lorvis time. All right, so those of you who don't maybe know what Lorvis is, first of all, shame on you for not watching every single episode of this podcast. But secondly, the world was being given a disservice by not giving them a name. Peter, being the saint that he is, went with Te Lor Tra Vis. Lore Vis. Beautiful name. Beautiful. It's a stunning name. It's it's flowery and poetic. They had a really PDA filled moment on the field in Baltimore after the Chiefs beat the Ravens. Like Do we want to talk about whatever we were just talking about, <laughs> which was KD being the goat originally or Lorvis? Ooh. I'm ready for some Lorvis in my Lorvis. life. It's Lorvis time. Sorry, KD. You may, in fact, be kind of a goat, but over the top you go. Be careful with that old Achilles injury. Oh, Those can be, yeah. Be careful. Oh, well, that's nice. Here's the part that's going to upset you. I have made a full face turn oh, crap. on Lorvis because here's the deal. Number one, she's been around all year. And I really, for whatever reason, when I see her like cheering and going, like he, she actually looks like she's legitimately fawning over this guy. Like they yeah. look in love. Living and dying by each move. She yeah. really does. Like she yeah. really looks sincere. And then there's another part, right? People like me and Beetle wanted to <laughs> talk shit about Lorvis. Yeah. Because it was annoying and over the top and like, I don't need pop music injected into my football and blah, blah, blah. But then the crazy people of the world God, have like yeah. turned this into like a real hatred of this woman who is like, by all accounts, a lovely person and incredibly talented. And yeah. she's, by the way, not the technical director for CBS. Like True. she's just there watching the game, doing her thing. And people now hate her. And now there's a new angle that I love, which is right wingers I'm seeing are yep. starting to think that she's going to do this. This is all part of some Biden plan. What? Yeah. Oh, yes. Because How she's going to endorse Biden after the Super Bowl. Okay, no. she kind of already has done that in the past. Who cares? So, and, oh, and it's also part of the NFL script, even though literally 90% of the owners of the NFL are Thank Trump you. supporters. Thank they are you. actually trying. To, none of it makes sense. And it's so insane that it now has me on Team Lorvis. But, no, you're right. But give me you're this. Right. And I want to hear your entire reply to all of this nonsense. What about the fact, how amusing is it, that if you decided to hate Lorvis because of politics, you have to root for the team from San Francisco. I love it's, it. It's Yeah, but there's there's some MAGA dudes on the Niners. So it's like, it's, <sighs> we're all intertwined, ladies and gentlemen. We can't get away from each other. But what I have learned is that every time they show Taylor Swift on the screen, a fragile man somewhere loses a testicle. And I love it. And I hope it continues. So you're with me now. All the way now. through the parade. No, I'm with you. It's, it's absurd. Look, do I like mocking things? Sure. Am I an asshole? Yes. A lot of people say that. Duh. But at the end of the day, I don't care how many times they show Taylor Swift. Is it more than the average girlfriend slash wife? Yes, of course it is. Because she's a global icon and a billionaire. And there's just not anybody else like her that is going to these games. No offense to the other wives and girlfriends. I'm sorry, that's just the way it is. And like you said, she's not the TD. She's not calling for shots of herself during the game. I don't give a rat's patootie. It's ridiculous how absurd this has become. And I do love the fact that we now know that it's logistically possible for her to make it to the Super Bowl from Tokyo. I didn't know that. Time change. Ooh. Hey, how do you like that? 12 hour <laughs> difference. See you at the game, Lorvis. It's like two days ago. You totally can make it. So by the yeah. way, do you, do you, so for everyone watching for all the clips you've seen, like the uh, people who know me and Beetle and the only way you consume our show is through our yeah. Instagram feed. Oh, this true. is us saying we are actually now team Lorvis. Okay. Do you see that? Oh yeah. Do you look see at what us. I'm doing? Do you see what we're doing? We're doing that. We're, I'm basically we're a Swifty. <laughs> well, let's not go too far. But I do love and I protect her right to love the man she loves. Wow. Protect Lorvis at all costs. <laughs> Our final story of the day. Let's oh, talk. That's right. Let's oh, talk. 
You want to talk threesomes? That's Who right. doesn't want to talk threesome? All right, threesome talk, talk okay. baby. By the way, I started saying, do you want to talk threesomes? And then my eyes skipped ahead to the names. And I don't know if I want to talk threesomes now. But wait, wait. here we go. <laughs> you don't want to talk about a threesome with Andy Reid? Well, it's not just Andy Reid. So picture it. On one side of the threesome battle, you have Mahomes, Andy Reid, Travis Kelsey. On the other side of this threesome battle, Tom Brady, Bill Belichick, Rob Gronkowski. Do we continue to talk Lorvis or do we switch to this battle royale of threesomes? I think for the for the for the sanctity of the show. Oh dear. Well, we're, we are supposed to be about finding the most important topic of the week. And we're sitting here at the last story. You got to go Lorvis. Whoa, let's do it. I mean, it's, come on, Lorvis is more important than us analyzing which threesomes better. Yeah, that's true. And by the way, until they're real threesomes, I'm not that impressed anyways. So wait, you're saying if you could get real video of an yeah. Andy Reid, Kelsey yeah. Mahomes threesome, you're in. Yeah, only fans that. Only fans that shit right now. <laughs> Over the top you go. <laughs> Watch out. Andy's heavy. Big know, burger, man. He's All so right. jolly. But yes, like, oh God, there they are. They're Did you see so the cute moment between between uh, Andy Reid and, and Taylor? Yes, everyone loves her. You know what I realized? This is such a girly moment for me, but do you know that the... The commitment it takes to always have on full red lipstick. Do you understand how hard that is? It's not easy. And you know what's interesting? I don't like full red lipstick. It's like, mm -hmm, it's a mm -hmm. thing for me. I generally, I'm annoying. And I know like when women wear makeup, they don't like always care what their partner actually thinks about it. That's but I true. am, I am the guy who's like, I don't like the red lipstick. I'm not into it. <laughs> You're my dad. I just am <laughs> not like generally into it. It's like too much. It's like overstay. For some reason, it works really well with Taylor Swift. It's her thing. It's her her thing. It's her signature. By the and way, do we think she makes? Let me just ask you this. I mean, we all love who we love, and we're willing to sort of make sacrifices. Sure. If you're her, are you finishing the fourth night of your Tokyo stop, jumping on the PJ, flying ten hours over the ocean? To get to Vegas day of, but early in the morning, I guess to nap and then go to the game. Are you doing all that? That's a really good question. I mean, I guess I'd ask my partner, like, oh, keep in mind, she's a billionaire. She has a private jet. Uh -huh. So you say, hey, um, this, are you, do you really care a lot about me being there if you win the Super Bowl? Like, is that a huge thing for you? Or is it like, it's your job and, and you've already won two. And there's that. And if but he's she like, wasn't part of those two. Right. So if he's like, no, it would mean everything for you to be there. I want us to share the moment. Damn. Yeah, I think you got. It's just sleeping on a plane, dude. I mean, first of all, don't talk to me about it. it's just sleeping on the plane. It's two Xanax, a minimum. And it's me getting there and being real groggy. So sure, if you want to prop me up weekend at Bernie style in the suite. Weekend at Beatles. Red lipstick well, well, on me. <laughs> well, first of all, <laughs> first of all, weekend at Beatles. She, we, she's not you. She's not a psycho. No. She can she's probably, probably fly. Good at flying. Yeah, that's Second right. of all, it's literally going to be her own like monstrous plane with a full size bed. Like you've never, and you've, a probably, you've probably never had a king size bed on a flight before. In First your of all, own you don't bedroom. know my life, Peter. You don't know my <laughs> life. But maybe I haven't. <laughs> so like she'll have a bedroom and like. It's true. I, if it's I like had, Air Force One, basically, for her. It, it is. Like, so yeah. why not? Like, it'll be fun. And you'd kind of be partying. But then doesn't partying. she have sh shows after that? Like, you, it's not yeah, just I think, this I think back to Australia, which is crazy. Oh, my God. But she that has time, is, but she has time to get back. And again, you get back on the plane and you fall asleep again and watch movies and eat ice cream Sundays. I imagine her life is sort of like Josh Baskin and Big. Like, hey, I want to watch the Giants Broncos Super Bowl with all the commercials removed. Like, she does whatever right. else she wants. So... What live, life. Lorvis. Live. Live, well, Lorvis. And guess oh what? That what? means it has been 90 seconds and we've come to a decision. The new undisputed most important thing on planet Earth this week is Lorvis. Lorvis. The love between <laughs> Taylor and Travis. Their PDA, <laughs> which will live on at the Super Bowl this year. And we're here for some reason. Beetle and I have completely flip-flopped. And we are here. I might cry. I might shed a tear when oh, okay. Lorvis so, connects. I'm definitely not crying. So we. I will not go that far, but I'm rooting for these two kids. You know, if they can make it, we all can. <laughs> that is it. <laughs> that is it for us. Tune in next week to determine the only thing you need to care about and what goes over the top. <laughs>